Our next inductee today, Steve Liebler. Um, he's truly, you know, had a career that spanned a long time. Growing up as a junior in Tidewater, Virginia, um, he, he 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 learned the game um, from his family, which I know is important to you, as well as from a gentleman named Tom Strange, who was the father of Curtis and Alan Strange. Um, so. He was learning golf from absolutely the best people you possibly could. Um, you know, I never knew his brother Lloyd, um, but Lloyd was very close friends with my, my buddy Danny Yates. And um, you know, Lloyd went to Georgia to play golf, and um, unfortunately, this terrible disease has taken too many people. Took Lloyd from us, and um, and I've, I've heard so many stories about him. And I, I know that, that that Lloyd's life and his greatness as a player is something that Steve, you know, learned from. And um, it's a it's a great story, and I know he's with you today, as well as the strangers are. So um, it's, it's great to see good things happen to people like you. You know, Steve's playing record, I'm not gonna take all of your stuff by here, but just a couple of things I just wanted to just point out that, that impressed me. Um, he, he won the Eastern Amateur three times, and this was, you know, between being a, this is before, during, and after being a pro. And how many years was it between your victories? Thirty. Thirty years between winning the Eastern Amateur, which is one of the top four or five major amateur championships in this country. And the last one he won, he was 52 years old. So he was doing a Todd White on those boys. And, um, you know, that, that's exceptional, Steve. That's, that's longevity. Um, the other thing that you've done that I can only think of one other person maybe that's done it, and that's you've qualified for every USGA event that you're eligible for. That would be the US Junior, the US Amateur, the Mid Amateur, the Senior Championship, the Senior Open, where am I leaving off? The Team Championship now? Did I get, it? Did I get them all? Oh, yeah, the public links too. Well, I wouldn't think about the public links. That makes you the only person that I've ever heard of to accomplish that. Well done, my friend. Well done. Mike Ravley. Thank you all for this honor. Uh, you know, Steve is a good friend. And I'm privileged to stand before you today and present my friend Steve Lee to the South Carolina Golf Hall of Fame. To me, this is the single biggest honor I've ever had in my 56 years of playing this game. I want you to know that. Thank you for asking me. You know, I love saying Steve's name. Stephen McLaurin Leeper. Makes me feel like Mel Gibson in Braveheart. You know, it, 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 if you play golf with him, he's that way as well. Well, he's that competitive. You know, I was going to talk about all the accomplishments that brought Steve to this honor. But I figured nobody brought pajamas, so I, you know, I'll just hit some of the highlights with Frank so graciously he just did for me. But, uh, you know, growing up, he was under the tutelage of his dad, Al, and a club pro named Tom Strange. Steve's played in every major USGA event there is, except for, I guess, the new USGA four ball. You know, if you just touch on some of it, he played his first USGA event at 15. He has a semifinal in the US mid -air, a semifinal in the US senior. He's competed in the USGA team championship, a 43rd place finish in the United States Open. Uh, a four-year career on the PGA Tour. He coached the University of South Carolina Gamecocks for 10 years, taking six of those teams to the NCAA championships. Uh, he has won the Eastern Amateur three times. The South Carolina Mid-Am, the Carolinas Mid-Am. And as I was going through his record, 54 more amateur championships that I know about, not including Carolina's PGA, uh, senior tournaments that you can play from 50 to 55. Uh, just thinking about all that makes me tired. Uh, you know, I've got a few quotes here from people who know Steve pretty well. Robert Gardner said, as a person, he's the best. Besides my father, I learned
learn more about golf from Steve Lieber. Mm -hmm. Carl Paulson of the PGA Tour and Radio said, Steve taught me what it takes to play on the tour. For that, I'm grateful. And I serve as an assistant coach now at USC because I want to pass this golf information on to the next crew of USC golfers. Mark and Vinnie Giles, of whom we all know is amateur great of fame, said, Steve has represented your state numerous times. He's gained friends and admirers all over the country. He has represented your state with dignity and class. And that's for sure you have. Over the years, Steve has, has been one of the guys that, that stepped up when an organization, a friend, uh, needed help in, in, with donations or time. Uh, time which we all know is much more valuable as you get older than money. Uh, he's gone to the inner cities of Columbia and collected kids with his two sons in tow, taking underprivileged kids to Bobby Foster's golf camp and then delivering them back home and going back and getting them again the next day. Uh, you know, I've, I've experienced this graciousness of his. Uh, up in our area, we have a thing called the Cider Cup Matches. And Steve's been one of the first people to always step up and give money to the first team of Greenville, Spartanburg, and Cherokee counties. You know, Steve's a husband, a father, and now a grandpa. Steve's very proud of his son's accomplishments. You know, Kyle, I guess until this year, was a baseball coach. And, and when we play golf in the spring, Steve would always be talking about Kyle's baseball stuff. You know, it's his team and how he was doing. Chase is a golfer, and, and he always talks about Chase's accomplishments and his role with the CGS. CGA, excuse me. And, yeah, Miss Hannah May. Pops is right, right around her little bitty fingers. He showed me a, a dress he got. We were riding down the fairway. Steve, when you play golf with Steve's partner as a four, well, he's pretty serious. I mean, you know, you, you try to cut up with him and he kind of looks at you like, shut up, let's play, you know. But we're going down and he pulls out his phone and he brings up this picture and he says, look at this dress I bought. I mean, that was what was on his mind. Look at the dress I bought him of and yeah, he's keeping up with his fashion look. He's got her nice bright colors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, then you have Debbie. She's been one of Steve's biggest supporters over the years. She's been a great wife and mom. She's followed him all over the globe. And, and, and you know, they've shared a lifetime of memories. You know, the Japanese have a, a term for friendship. It's called Kinzoku. The term is literally translated as family. The connotation suggests a bond between two people who have similar commitments and share a similar destiny. Time and distance do nothing to diminish the bond we have with these kinds of friends. Steve is that kind of friend. Sometimes friends go for a few months and they don't see each other. But because we know each other well, it's like we just spoke yesterday. We have many of these friends from playing the game of golf. At tournaments every year, we catch up and we see each other. The bond remains strong, and it all ties back to this great game we call golf. For without golf, none of us may have ever crossed paths. Uh, there's a plaque over there, I guess I, I need to read a little bit from. Right, pretty small one, folks. <laughs> Um, on January 14, 2017, Steve Liebler was inducted into the South Carolina Hall of Fame, Golf Hall of Fame. Steve's ability and passion for the game led him to be a champion at all levels, from a junior into the senior ranks. Steve accomplished, partic accomplished participating in every USGA championship at which he was eligible, an amazing feat on itself. Equally amazing was winning the prestigious Eastern Amateur three times with the third championship coming 30 years after his initial triumph. Thus far in his career, Steve has claimed six SCGA and two CGA major titles. Other accomplishments of Steve's include 12 additional local and statewide events, not including being the winner of the Columbia City Tournament 11 times. Steve's golf ability has allowed him to qualify and play on the PGA Tour from 1981 through 1984.
Steve, when not competing for a championship, has certainly been a great friend of the game. His talents and knowledge to the coach of the USC men's golf team from 1985 to 1994, he has always been one of the first to offer his assistance, both physically and financially, to ensure the growth of the game. We welcome Steve as the 66th or 67th member of the South Carolina Golf Hall of Fame.
competitions uh, throughout the state. Um, I, I, I really can't thank you guys enough. Um, I think that we probably have, and I think it's been mentioned, one of the premier golf associations and staffs in the country. I want to thank, and this is kind of unusual, a, a group of, of not people but places that had an influence on my career when I came back um, to playing amateur golf. Um, I was looking for places to play. We had great competition in, in um, the Columbia area and the, and the uh, FCGA. But I went and played in places like Orangeburg at the Rose Festival and Santee, um, where Scoop, Robbie Robbins from down to Tri-County so that gave, came and, and asked me to come down and play in the, the Santee Amber. Um, the Festival of Flowers in Greenwood, and the Festival in uh, Greenwood Invitational, the Darlington Southern 500 down in Darlington. Um, all great places to be able to go and play. I, and, and I went um, to try to help bring up the level of competition in some of those places. And when I start thinking about it, you know, I went down and, and played in Orangeburg one year, and lost in a playoff. And somebody said, gosh, you lost in a playoff in Orangeburg? Yeah, this guy named Mark Anderson, who ended up winning the state amber, and went on to, you know, went on on the, on the web.com, and, and they said, well, you know, why did you go to Greenwood playing the Greenwood Invitational? I said, well, I played with this guy named Ben Martin. Anybody ever heard of him? He went on the tour, you know. Um, we've been so fortunate uh, to be able to play with with great competitors and, and see see some of the younger competition come up. Um, I want to thank Frank. Uh, Bert, all the, 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 the people at the Country Club of Charleston would kind of be like my second home, who always gave me an opportunity to come down and play in the Isaiah. Um, what a great place and, and a, a way to really kind of test your, your game, so to speak. I want to thank the McBride family, uh, especially Greg, um, for the development and, and of, of golf in the Columbia area, in the Northwoods. And all my friends at Northwoods that um, have given me an opportunity to kind of cut my teeth and learn how to compete again. And, you know, if you, if you go out there and, and think you can play and, and you have a bad day, your wallet will definitely uh, tell you um, that that's different. Um, my friends at Mid-Carolina who have supported me and constantly called my, my Lathrop Cup partners, Jeff Twitty. And, you know, it was a really unusual group. But the hero in our team was was uh, Ron Callahan, who, who played his last 15 holes under par. Um, but what a great, great honor to play on that team. My buddy Rick Kraut. Um, I love him. We play almost every weekend, and uh, he's my biggest hero. To all my four ball partners, except Bill Smoke, which I had a worse finish with and any four ball winner ever played in. Um, my son Chase, we won um, the father-son together. Um, unfortunately, Gus Stovin couldn't be here. God, we had what I would call the it factor for so many years playing as partners. Um, at one time, we held, held all four of the South Carolina four ball championships in a 12-month period of time. Um, and we won the, the Carolina scoreball. But one quick story, it, it goes to show you, Mike talked about, you know, you go along and uh, we competed. Gus and I didn't really talk a whole lot. We didn't have a whole lot to talk about. Um, <laughs> other than the fact that we won the Carolina scoreball one year, and I think he played uh, two, two medal play, five matches, is that right, Jack? In seven rounds, Gus played with seven different sets of clubs. <laughs> played with seven different putters. And not once did he ever say, what do you think? <laughs> and Mike, you know, again, I keep coming back. The only man that's ever kissed me on my lips. <laughs> uh, Mike was so excited when we won the first of our two Mid-Am football championships. Uh, that he grabbed me walking off the green and kissed me on the lips. <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't do it the next year because Bill Smunk was on the green. And that may have been a little. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been very lucky uh, to be influenced um, in the game of golf by a, a number of great people. Um, Tom Strange was a club professional at the club I grew up at. Uh, so I grew up 
very close with Curtis and Alan. Um, their sister Ann and I were born on the same day. Uh, my brothers and, and my family. But, um, you know, the people that you run across that, that influence you even more, I will never forget, I was playing in the U.S. Senior Amateur uh, two years ago. I felt like I'd really accomplished something. Um, you know, I'd gotten there, I'd qualified, I, I really played well in the first two rounds of, of medal play, and I'm standing on the tee with uh, my competitor for the day, and one of the USGA people walked up, said, looked at, at this person, said, hey, he said, you know, you've always played in a lot of our USGA events. He says, how many have you played in? And he was about this tall, and he looked up at him and says, 67. And I'm going, man, I said, you know, the, the 10 or 12 that I've been able to play in, you know, it really doesn't compete with that. Um, but I, I really feel fortunate that uh, I've played in a golf association that have produced great people first. And I think we forget about that. But great champions and great champions that have gone on. Um, to my knowledge, I've played with two major championship winners. I can't even begin to count how many PGA Tour web.com champions that we have that I have been able to compete at with. When I look at them, they're just kids. USGA champions, Walker Cup representatives, um, just in the rebirth of my amateur career since 1994. Um, yes, I was fortunate to, to win three times at the Eastern Amateur. But you know, my greatest accomplishment in that event was probably that I caddied for four, three winners in four years prior to that. And I had one second place in there. Um, people that were good friends of my brothers. I caddied for Ben Crenshaw twice um, and went on and played the tour and, and with, with Ben. Um, and I caddied for Jenny Giles one year. And the lone player that didn't win was Gary Koch and he lost to Andy Bean by a shot. But there's really two people that influenced me of getting back into the amateur game. And I want to thank both of them. One of them is here today, Larry Penley. And the other is Buddy Alexander. Back when I was coaching, I would chase these kids up and down the sides of fairways, trying to, you know, just get a glimpse. And then I'd run home the next week, and I'd pick up the phone, and I'd call them. Man, I'm, you know, I'm really glad to see you played great last week. Are you going to play at this tournament next week? No, coach. I'm, I, I'm playing over at this amateur tournament. I said, really? I said, that's great. I said, uh, good luck to you. He says, yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to playing with Coach Pimley in a practice round. I said, what? He said, yeah, and Coach Alexander and I are paired in the first round together. And I'm going, I got to do something to get my amateur status back here. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, that didn't really um, pan out too well because I didn't stay uh, in the coaching profession long enough to use that. But they were the two that really kind of influenced me to say, Hey, you know, it's better to be on the inside of the ropes than the outside of the ropes, no matter how it is. Um, and then once I came back, I, I almost didn't, I almost didn't compete. I, I'll never forget, I was playing with my good friend Clem King at the very first uh, uh, city championship that I came back to play in 1994. I'd driven all night long almost to get back to Northern Alabama from our recruiting trip at the Future Masters. And we were playing at Fort Jackson. I'd never seen the golf course. You know, I got out there and I played pretty good. And um, I think I was tied for lead or leading. Went to Northwoods is when we alternated courses and I got paired with a really good friend of mine, Frank Turner. And Frank was there and, and, and I didn't play very good. And we walked off and Frank would always tell you like it was. We called him Shave. So Shave looks at me and says, boy, he said, if you're gonna win this thing tomorrow, you're gonna have to play a hell of a lot better than that. Well, <clears throat> my family always went on vacation about that time. So my wife, two small boys pack up the car, they head off to Myrtle Beach, it's a Saturday. I'm trying to fiddle around, you know, I hadn't played a lot of competition in probably 10 years. I'm trying to figure out, you know, when I'm gonna leave to go to the golf course, playing at noon. I'm driving, I get, as soon as I pull the car out of the driveway, it's, the, the what else hits you. And you don't think the mine is a terrible thing to waste? My gosh. Um, all the way from Irmo to the exit at Fair Road, I'm going, what if I don't play good today? What are people going to think? What if I go out there and play um, good and I don't win? And what if, what if, and I pulled off the side of the road just outside of Fair, off of Fair Road before I got off, 
and I'm sitting there, and this will date me, I looked at the bag phone in my car, <laughs> and I said, this $4.50 call that I'm about ready to make, I could call over to Northwoods and say, you know, I've hurt myself. I said, is it really worth going through all this to go out and play for a trip? You know, is this what I really came back to do? And I said, oh, what the heck, you know, and I looked at myself in the mirror, put the bag phone down, I drove out, I hit a couple of balls, I got on the first hole, my nerves kind of settled in a little bit. I hit it about a foot on the first hole, <clears throat> got to the second hole, I hit it about a foot on the second hole. I got to number three at Northwoods, which was a par five. Back then, you could kind of take a little risk, and I hit two shots, knocked on the green, I made a three, so I went three, two, three. And needless to say, that, that kind of jump-started the 11 championships that I was able to, to go on and win. Um, but I was very fortunate uh, that, that I could convince myself that the importance of the game was to give back and I felt like going out there and playing, I was giving something back. Um, and speaking of, thanks to Bobby Foster, I mean, the ultimate man who gives things back. Uh, Bobby's responsible for getting me to, back to Columbia uh, several times. Uh, but what he has done for, the, for golf in the city of Columbia, uh, the golf in South Carolina, the, the uh, Columbia City Championship and the Fairway Outreach Program, um, really had an influence on, on my life and, and tried to help that. Uh, and all the clubs, thanks to all the clubs that were able to host the, the Columbia City Championship. Um, I will say our city championship probably rivals any in the country. You start to look at the people that we produce, the players that were, have come through, the number of, of champions. Uh, again, I don't know how many can boast that they've got a, a two-time champion that went on to win the U.S. Open. Um, and, and USGA uh, uh, participants. Um, I want to say thank you to, to some people who really gave me an opportunity once I left coaching, um, the Peterson family. Um, in my heyday, they gave me great support, encouraged me to play, um, even though I had to go out and sit on the driving range with Jerry uh, 18, 20 hours a day as he was trying to go from breaking 100 down to shooting even par. And, and my current employer, um, I thought at this time of your life, you're supposed to slow down. Um, I, I work for a great company in Colonial Life, and they've encouraged me to continue to compete and excel. I want to thank all my teammates and, and players that influenced me so much at different times in my career. My teammates uh, who had an impact on me both during my playing time with them as well as um, when I was coaching to encourage me, uh, the players that pushed me to limits that made me a better person. Um, I will tell you, for many years, I was an angry person. Um, I think Frank hit the, the nail on the head. Anybody who's been impacted <clears throat> by this terrible disease, I played angry for a long time for, for a, lot of, <clears throat> a lot of the wrong reasons. Um, but my teammates and my, 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 the players that played for me um, will never know the impact that they have on me. And now I want to get back and end um, by saying thanks to, to all of you who, who, who I probably failed to, to recognize but had a, uh, a huge impact on, on why I'm here. Um, I think contributions to the game of golf come in many ways. Uh, I was probably never very good at fundraising. Sorry, Rick. Um, I guess in the, my years at the university when they were always looking for another way to try to have that 500 season be impactful. Um, but, but I tried to, to, to contribute to the Golf Association the best I could, and I, I continue to do that. But, but I, I'm hoping that the bar that I set from a playing standpoint for those younger players to, to compete. And, and I want them to know that, you know, I, I played hard. Um, I tried to compete the right way. Um, and I always tried to set a fashion statement that no one would ever forget. Those young kids would look at me and go, oh man, I will never wear that collection. Um, and I'd like to end by 
by saying um, thank you to my family because they're really the heroes. Um, you know, I, I think anybody who's been here who has played as much golf as we are can look at the mirror and say, you know, I've been pretty selfish all my life. Um, I go out every weekend, play on the weekends. I go, you know, play in golf tournaments, and and it really doesn't mean anything other than, you know, you're playing for a trophy. You're out there with your friends. You're competing. You're doing what you love. You're playing with passion. But um, I've had a wonderful relationship with both my children. Not many can say that I played in, in major championships and had my kids on the back and shared that. And I've played with both of them as partners in, in golf events. And um, I, I, those are things that no one can ever take away from me. It's greater than the game itself. They've encouraged me. Um, they um, have pushed me. Uh, I'll never forget this year, I didn't play very well at the U.S. Senior Amateur the first round. And I was trying to figure out, Rick was texting me, what's wrong, what's wrong? You know, and I get this, this text video from my my granddaughter who is now about two years old <clears throat> and she goes I turn it on and it goes pops more birdies pops <laughs> and you know you kind of forget all the you know why you played so bad and, and, and everything else um, thank you Kyle Catherine um, you know you've been a great support um, and thank you for giving me a wonderful granddaughter um, to, to to Chase, you've been a great partner. Um, Chase K for me uh, at, at the U.S. Senior Amateur a couple of years ago, um, and I never probably thanked him properly, so thanks. Um, but it's a, a funny story. We're playing, and, and I'm in this first match, and, and I don't, I'm like Dustin Johnson. I didn't read the rule sheet, um, so I'm sitting there, and, and we've got a hole, and, and we finish it. But you, you got to walk back to the cart and drive it around. I said, after I chipped it up on the green, I, I, I said, Chase, I said, just grab the cart and drive it around to the next tee, the ninth tee. And uh, he does, and we get over there, and, and the match was even, and, and it, the walking of a uh, referee comes up and says, we have to make a correction in the match. And I said, what's wrong? He says, your caddy moved the cart, that's automatic loss of hole. You know, you both made threes. Uh, Mr. Gage wins the hole. Or, and I said, oh, okay. And Chase was trying to be apologetic. He's running out in front. So we go down the ninth hole. He, um, I, I lay it up, and I, I get, to get to the layup spot. Chase has got the, the range finder, and he's got the range finder. And I looked at him, I said, what's wrong? He goes, the battery's dead. And I said, well, I think I got a battery in the bag. We'll do this the old-fashioned way. And he was like, right walk yardage me. Um, so, so we walked it off, we conferred 143 yards, and I hit this shot, takes two hops, rolls up, goes in a hole. And I birded the next three holes, and, and, and my opponent looked at me and says, well, I guess the golf gods got us back even now. Um, but it, it, it's been great to have them and, and be able to play. And to my partner of 35 plus years, None of this could have been accomplished without your love and support. Um, you're my strength to succeed. I love you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you again to the SCGA, the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to all the winners, um, the players of the year. Uh, cherish those moments, but more than that, cherish the friends around you. Um, the great game of golf has given us so much. And hopefully, I'll be able to give back a little bit more of what it's given me. Thank you.